Okay, so I think, you know, we could, of course, go back to the main quest now. Although I was thinking a little bit about how we could potentially go and uh, do a little bit of the super crafting here. Because, I mean, part of me feels like we should not, we shouldn't experiment too much with this stuff because it's going to get really expensive really quickly. And if we, say, drop 10,000 crowns on an item that we're going to replace momentarily, then that's basically just 10,000 crowns wasted. We do, of course, have Witcher gear on at the moment, so uh, I don't think we're at that much of a risk of us actually, you know, like tossing our gear out the window anytime soon. But then again, we are, of course, now doing the DLC, and there might be bigger and better pieces of gear for us to pick up soon, so... I think maybe we just go a little bit, a little bit, with experimenting with some of the uh, the rune right options here, and just test it out, see what we like, and or see if we like. I'm thinking just like doing one thing, and then once we, I'd say like if we have another round of big gear upgrades, then immediately after that is probably the best time to invest in that gear because. That means we'll have a long period of time in which we're using that gear. All right, so. Creation be those glasses. Yeah, so if you could enhance some gear. Craft something for me, would you? Remind me, obviously we spent a ton of money just getting this guy started up with his business here. But, uh... How expensive is the actual act of crafting itself? Yeah, a few thousand for the, the major upgrades. And if you go down a level, it's still 2,500. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's good context. Because, I mean, yeah, basically, imagine we spend all these crowns on upgrading two swords, a chest plate, and we upgrade all of our pieces of armor so that they suddenly have three sockets, and that would mean that we would have, what, three, uh, gloves would be four, trousers would be five, boots would be six pieces of gear, all spending 2,500 crowns on them, and would be over 10,000 crowns. So if we turn around and switch that gear, you know, imminently, then suddenly that's over 10,000 crowns completely wasted. So that's why I don't want to go all in right now but there were some things we were saying might be interesting to at least test out a bit like what was um there were a few that seemed really cool to me i was thinking the one that makes it so that this one i think you guys were saying is good that's a little tempting to test out the other one that was intriguing to me was where is it? Is it one of the higher up ones? Huh, I'm not seeing it right now. Are these all of them? The one that makes it so that your like sword gets the effect of the sign? Oh, maybe it was because I was like hovering over chest plate or something? Hmm? Huh? Or maybe this is technically the armor and it needs to be over a sword. Oh, just swords and and uh and chest armor. Okay. I thought I thought we were saying that maybe you could add sockets to the the smaller stuffs. But perhaps not. Cause yeah, that was another thing that I was thinking of when we were talking about the Oh, maybe these are rune words and not glyph words or vice versa yeah i think that must be the reason why i'm not finding the one that i was looking for that must be it um but yeah i was initially thinking that we'd only be able to use three at a time one for the chest plate and one for each of the swords if we can in fact make it work for both or for also gloves boots and trousers then suddenly that opens up a lot more options to us it is of course more expensive but that may not be possible 
The one that I was thinking that would be pretty cool was... Where are you? Where are you? I swear, this one is so lucid. The one that makes it so your sword takes on the effect of the signs. Did I totally make that up? Did I just completely fabricate that idea in my mind? Or was that actually one of the options? The other one was going to be this. So maybe we just try this one and see how we like it. And let's see, uh, or do we need to put it on a specific or be hovering over a specific item for that to work? Or are you going to say, well, it has those, uh, those existing rune stones in it. You're not going to let us do it. We need to remove those first. Sure. All runes or upgrades currently placed in the item will be removed. Hold on. Let's just make sure. We probably double check our sword real quick. Both of our swords real quick. And see. I think we have similar upgrades in both of them. But they aren't the same. They are not identical. So we should probably make a point of changing the upgrades on the one that we uh, don't like as much. Like, this is all armor piercing. Whereas this is a combination of attack power and armor piercing. I think we said... Armor piercing, at least at this age, is actually slightly better. So that would mean Silver Sword is probably the best one for us to change here. So let's give it a shot. The world's never ending creation be praised. Okay. So enhanced stuff. Craft something for me, would you? We said we want Silver Sword and we want. This one here severance yeah so it's it's expensive but i think it'll be cool thanks so long so now our silver sword i assume it only applies to our silver sword right probably you know it's not like when we have our silver sword on our back and we're using our seal sword that will still apply probably not and then the other thing would be, we are currently encumbered. So we should make a point of selling our stuffs. And does this guy, does he sell or does he buy at a premium? Or should we just take a second here to go back to, to Novigrad? Just to see you again. Quite the place. Sell the IBR or uh, the other dude. What did you bring from a fear? Mind if I have a look? Yeah, yeah, I was thinking we'd probably go with a different type of enchantment for, for different swords anyway. But, uh, like how much? I feel like you are not buying this at a premium. I don't think you are. Also, I don't remember, what was this armor? Oh, it looks so similar to the Thysian armor. I was like, huh? They're not quite the same, but the color scheme is almost identical. Yeah, I think... Let's stop back off at Novigrad Take real quick. Now. Go, and in the world glory, its never-ending creation be praised. Farewell. Okay. So yeah, let's get unencumbered. Let's get back some of the coins that we just spent. And, uh... And we'll get the chance to test out a little bit our new Silver Sword upgrade. So we got the additional range on the world is the primary thing, right? Let's go here, though. Okay. So, of course, it's not... It's not purely an upgrade, because we actually did lose damage in the process, because we already had the, the damage upgrades in. We had to sacrifice those. So we sacrifice damage in the name of additional range and utility, if you will. Hopefully, we'll like that. But we'll see. It does feel like Novograd is more crowded now with all the Redanians. Just didn't seem like there were quite this many people previously. Also, it is a little strange that after taking out Radifid suddenly... Uh, his troops are 
more prominent than ever. I mean, I think they started showing up here just before we began doing that. But timing is still just a little strange given how we did, you know, take him out. But anyways, we'll sell to Ibier here. And in doing so, hopefully we're getting a little bit of a better deal. Greetings, Ibier. Greetings, Geralt. How might I be of help? Uh, your hammer is going through your hip. On offer? But also, what do you have on offer? So let's see. I think the weapons here yeah these swords were selling for 100 at the previous guy whereas there are 150 here so ib air is is purchasing them for 50 percent more and i mean these aren't like crazy valuable but we have enough of them that would be a nice little bonus uh have we seen what these break down into let's just double check here all these flaming rose swords ah nothing special right that's pretty boring stuff so i think we're just going to sell them all Okay, so let's dump them. And this one, I assume, probably the same deal. And the armors, that we'll have to think a little bit more about, I think. Because those, we had some potentially interesting stuff there. And that's actually, what's that, like 2,000 coins worth of swords? That's not bad. So we have a couple of Order of the Flaming Rose chest plates. They are extremely heavy, because they are heavy armor. Fitting, I suppose. This one's 36. This one's also 36. 209, 209. But one on the left has a little bit better vitality, so I, I guess we'll sell this one. And I think we did have a Flaming Rose chest plate in our stash already because we were saying we might want to hold on to one of those for crafting purposes or for style purposes, really. But uh, I know we had a Thissian armor for the same reason because we wanted to have something that had 100% resistance to poison. But you, I think, are, are safe to sell. Let's definitely sell you. And then... These were pretty rare, weren't they? Didn't we get the New Moon gauntlets and trousers from a special quest somewhere? I forget which one it was, but I feel like those don't necessarily grow on trees. So we should probably be a little more cautious about selling them. We might want to stash them. If they are actually rare and useful. Are they any good? I mean, they aren't really any good, though, is the other thing. So do we do we actually need them? They look good, these guys. OK. Uh, sure. In that case, yeah, I think we we made so several well. thousand off of this. We made more than we spent on uh, on crafting the sword. Oh, actually, I was going to also just have you repair Greetings, our stuff? Ibier. Greetings, Geralt. How might I be of help? Almost forgot. Does that technically count as crafting? Listen, would you craft something for Listen, me? Listen, would you repair our stuff? Okay, yeah, let's just repair all. Isn't that an option somewhere? Repair equipped, yes. Uh, that's... Pretty expensive, but, you know, like I said, we did make a point of uh, selling a bunch of stuff, so still coming out ahead here, I think. And we'll just stash all this this other stuff. We may already have stashed some of that Flaming Rose stuff. I just don't remember. I know so, that we made a point of holding on to some of it. I just don't remember if we oh. stashed it or if the ones that we oh. were holding on to are the ones that are currently in our inventory, in which case we shouldn't get rid of them. So let's just make a quick pit stop off at our stash here while we're in the area. That way we know for certain. Uh, is this another one of these concerned citizen sermons? Do these ever go away? I feel like every single time we're in Novigrad, we see another one of those. Do they keep respawning or something? Is this crazy? Yeah, there's got to be like 20 of them at this point. Okay, but anyways, Soul Tan, um, fine, you do you, man, you, you do you, I, I won't say anything. Okay, did we actually sash the Flaming Rose stuff, because I'm not seeing it right, oh no, we have gloves, but only gloves, 
only gloves, it looks like. Yeah, so definitely do want to stash this. Could theoretically sell the gloves here. We have a higher level Thissian armor, so I was thinking we stash that and then get rid of the lower one. It'd be yeah, level 30 versus level 24. And then you guys are saying, oh, let's let's just you're saying that the new moon trousers and gauntlets look good? I mean if that is the case, then I mean we gotta we gotta test it out, right? Can't just take your word for it. This is fashion we're talking about? This is important stuff. Uh the gloves do look very formal. The trousers, it's hard to say, because I feel like our boots are just blocking them. Can't really see them very well. They just look simple, straight, they just look like dress pants. Tight-fitted dress pants at that, but like formal pants and formal gloves, which we do technically have what are considered to be more officially formal pieces of gear. But I suppose we can add these to the list as well. So let's put back on the Witcher gear and we'll we'll stash the new moon stuff. Put you back on as well. And then the gloves we're probably just gonna end up selling. Okay. No discounts, no credit. So stash you two. And I guess stash the, the bolts as well. It's just weighing us down a little bit. Anything else while we're here that we feel like we would particularly like to stash? Oh. We should probably sell, these are saddles that are not as good as our existing saddles, right? And then the Noon Wraith Trophy is, I think actually, one that we would prefer to have. I think we've generally been trying to use the Experience Trophies rather than the Gold Trophies, so I, those may be sort of our, our two most common ones. So, I kind of like to stash one of those because they do weigh a little bit, but... Otherwise, well, Alchemy doesn't have any weight, right? So, should be good there. Let's throw. You back on. How much does, oh, now it's not gonna tell us anything about this trophy. Okay, it is now apparently a mystery to us. I was just hoping to get the, the weight of it to see how much it is weighing us down, but the, the game said no, absolutely not, Lids. How dare you even consider such a thing? That weighs two. We'll stash it. Then, okay, we'll sell our other stuff here, and then we'll head on our way back to what I think will end up being the main quest after this. And actually, oh, well, while we're here, the Tavern Keeper is, technically speaking, buy the saddles for the most, right? So we might as well do that. Yeah, once we get the full set of that other stuff, it'll look good. You hear about me? Hear about you? I know all there is we talked to this guy before? I assumed well, that we had, but I don't remember this conversation. One never tires of Dandelion's tales and ballads. Why, all will be amazed when I tell them the wolf himself takes joy in listening to them. Now, tell me how I may be of service. Have we spoken to this guy? No! Definitely not! Wow! I am surprised. Okay, I guess we'll chat him up a little bit. You worked here long? Earlier, I mean. Under old Mr. White. I answered a notice. What did it say? Help wanted to assist in the oversight of an exclusive establishment with refined dimensions. <laughs> Baccalaureate freshly gained, ten years of tavern experience and thus, knowledge of the common tongue, elder tongue, and contemporary poetry. Why? Contemporary poetry? <laughs> Wouldn't you have been better off staying at the academy, or...? Oh, I never passed the entrance oh. there. Neither do I know a lick of elder. What? Though I can indeed play a bit of <laughs> Also, I've committed all Master Dandelion's works to memory. Ah, so that's how you got the job. I see. Could we play a bit, Gwent? Because I know that uh, at this point we've gotten all of the cards in the base game, so it's not like we could actually get any cards out of it, but we feel like 
it's been a while since we played Gwent that we could do it. Otherwise, I was mostly just what looking to sell doing? stuff to you. Namely, this. And then do we have other, like, furs or anything? I mean, a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Sell all the junk. It as well. Sell our one fizz tech. Yeah, why not? Don't think we'll get a card, but we could play. It does feel like it's been a long time since we last played Quint. So I feel like it's worth giving it a shot. Just ignore the person in the bottom right corner there who is currently possessed by a demon. And yeah, we'll go for the rare 10 crown game. Okay. Yeah, I don't even remember what the most recent deck we used was. I assume it was Nilfgaard based on how we're looking at Nilfgaard right now. But uh, I mean, we've comparatively speaking, played monsters much less than the other factions. So if this guy's not going to be any good, because he's a random dude, then maybe we ought to give monsters a shot here. I think we give that a go. Let's go for that. Oh, but uh, we may have recently picked up new leader abilities, right? Let's, let's check this out. I thought we got a new one for monsters recently. Mm. Oh, this looked good. And this is interesting because you usually don't want your spies to be strong. So you would think that this would not work very well. It does affect both your opponent and us, but monsters, comparatively speaking, has far fewer spies than everyone else. So I think that's the reason why this is a spies unit, or, or rather a, a monsters leader ability. But I think this one is the one that intrigues me the most. Restoring a card from our discard pile to our hand. Let's give that a shot. Okay. Oh, there are monsters as well. So what did we get? We got Scorch, Impenetrable Fog. Might want to dump that. We got, speaking of monsters not having spies, we got our best spy. We got a multiple Arrakis, a Rakai. Let's get rid of one. Well, that worked well. Got rid of one. And then got another. Although, actually, I think those are technically separate. Because although they are both muster Arrakis's, this is the melee version, this is the siege version, I think those are separate. And we have two vampires. We'd probably like to dump one of those instead, I'm thinking. And then we just hope that we don't get any more of the musters. And we got another weather effect. Okay, I mean, don't love all the weather effects, but I think for the most part we avoided getting too many of the musters here. So, these are all four strength, right? So we would still be able to use a Scorch on, on them and not a, that backfire on us. Also, you can hear the generic Gwent music right now, but you can also hear the music going on in the tavern behind us, which is kind of strange. Yeah, there's basically two, strong, two songs playing in the background right now. One of them is a little fainter than the other, but... Yeah, this one doesn't summon the uh, the six, so we should be fine there. Let's go for this, then. I think these are all four strength. Yeah. We're still safe from Scorches, and we can use our Scorch right now. And they're using their really good spy. Now, would the leader ability have affected the Mysterious Elf or not? Because he's a hero, so I feel like it wouldn't. But, uh, I mean, maybe we just return the favor here? See what we get. Although, uh, tell you what, oh, we lucked out there. We got two heroes. I was going to say it is actually potentially, of all the factions, perhaps worse to have spies with monsters than anyone else, particularly playing those spies early. I know I was saying that they don't have many of them, but because there's so much muster in monsters, you're at a significant risk of drawing into those muster cards, and you don't really benefit from drawing them into your hand. You want to keep them in your deck. So ideally, I think the order of operations would be play muster cards and then play your spies or anything else that can give you additional cards. But we didn't draw into any of those muster cards, so we, we lucked out there. Now, they do have more than 10 strength in the melee row, so we could dragon them. 
and that would destroy the griffin here. Is that good enough, or do we feel like we can do better? I mean, we do have a Scorch ourselves, and so by playing the dragon now, it would become the highest card, and then we wouldn't be able to play this card anymore, which would be a bit of a, a downside. So maybe we just play a hero here, bide a little more time, and see what else they want to play, and that might make things a little bit easier for us. Okay, they're going to go with their Arrakis Swarm. Same deal. This is, uh, this is looking awfully similar on both sides of the, the playing field right now. Uh, huh. Which one did we end up with? It was the range nerf, right? Yeah, so that's not relevant right now. Hmm. I mean, either we're going with a much bigger hero, either of these, or we're going with one variation on the Scorches. And I'm not sure that that... Well, maybe we go Dragon here, and then it could be a decent option for using our leader ability on that in a future round, because this is certainly one of our better cards, right? And we can't use that leader ability on a hero. Yeah, I'll always use Mustard before Spies. I think we just... We got lucky there, but that was technically a mistake. Just we're fortunate not to get punished by it. Let's go Dragon. He'll just destroy the Griffin, which is, you know, it's not an amazing play. I usually like to see if we can do a little bit better. But, oh. Now they go muster in the melee row, and this is, this is the thing. If we had waited one more turn, the 2020 hindsight curse. If we had waited one more turn, we could have removed both fives with the dragon. And then we could have used the Scorch to remove, yes, our raucous units, but also all of their Arrakuses and their remaining vampires, which would have been pretty cool. But uh, right now, it would just remove our dragon. Oh, well, no, the, the second round would have still removed our dragon, I suppose, so maybe not quite as good as we like, but yeah, they have now played a couple of pretty big combos here, so they've committed pretty hard in round one. I'm a little tempted to pass here, after them have it, especially, I think one of those musters, at least, I don't know if it came from their first round with the Arrakuses or with the Vampires, but I think one of those came from their hand, because they're actually two cards down right now. And normally when you're playing against monsters, you gotta be a little bit careful about passing early, because they're gonna keep one of their units on the playing field, but we're also monsters, so we'll have that as well. So, I mean, if we can keep the dragon for seven strength, then that'd be great. I think we do that. I think we pass now. And we take the card advantage and we just especially hope that we get to keep our big seven strength card and they end up with just one of their relatively weaker fours. It's a little bit of a risk. It certainly is. But I'm hoping that'll help out. Oh, they decoyed, what was it? Their, their five strength vampire? Just a little bit overkill, I'd say. Okay, so we both ended up with four strength card here so we didn't get the dragon which it's not that bad because we could play it from our graveyard and here's the the vampire that they decoyed out of i mean i'd argue that's potentially a bit of a waste of a, a decoy although because monsters tend not to have much in the way of spies then maybe there aren't too many uses for said decoy so we could use our leader ability to get the dragon out there and oh no, 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 you have nine strength of the melee row, so don't do that yet. Don't do that yet. Um, Scorch does work, but I'd like, I'd probably prefer to do something that has us pass them in one turn, so that, that way they can't just pass on their next turn and force us to play an additional card. So let's, it's, it's a big play, but I think we go with Siri here. That forces our opponent to play another card if they want to win round two. Or if they want to push us, and they won't. Okay, so yeah, it did mean that we played a, a pretty big card there, but I think, you know, it, we did it in order to maintain our two-card advantage. It was a, a pace play, so to speak. And it means that, once again, we're both going to be hanging out with our four strengthers. And we go first here, which is a little bit tricky. 
because I think we almost certainly want to go with our leader or our hero here. Because otherwise, you know, we have a Scorch. If we play almost anything here, we're at risk of scorching ourselves, and that's something we'd like to avoid. I mean, this actually could put us in that position as well, come to think of it. Ooh. This is tricky. We could preemptively put down the, the impenetrable fog here. We don't have any ranged units. Our opponent may not either. So it may do exactly nothing, but at the very least, it gives us a little more time for our opponent to play a card. And we hope that, that means that uh, they play another bigger card that could then be our Scorch target, like the Fiend. Okay, gives us a little bit more flexibility now. We could either play the Kairin safely without being at risk of hurting ourselves, or we could go straight into the Scorch. I think we probably do want to Kairin here, because we can wait out the Scorch for one more turn in that case. Also, the dragon would now work. It would destroy the fiend. Oh, okay. Now Scorch removes two six strength cards. It's twice as good at this stage. Alternatively, we could undo the weather effect that we just did. And they're running out of cards here. So I think we do this. Well, what are the chances they have a, a bigger card that's going to interrupt our, our 12 point uh, Scorch? How greedy are we feeling? Do we settle for 12 or do we see if they say play something like the Crones and they're what? Are they all six strength? In which case they'd get 18 from that play alone, but they'd have five cards tied at six strength and we'd remove them all with one Scorch. And that's really tempting. All right, I'm going to go greedy here and deliberately wait for the Scorch. We're hoping they don't play something that's like seven or eight strength, but I probably just jinxed it. Uh, that does also break it. Well, I mean, it's tied. Now, you know, we could have... Actually, I suppose this is better. The Scorch is going to remove 12 Strength now. It would have removed 12 Strength on the previous turn. However, this time, Scorch will remove this guy. And that means that we can still use our Leader ability to play the Dragon and remove the Fiend as well. And that's why I think that that is probably better than what we had before. So let's Scorch now. Then we'll probably use our Leader ability next turn. Remind me what theirs is. Oh! That works too. Yeah, that uh, that still works. We will counter their leader ability with our leader ability. Oh, it just puts it in our hand. Okay, we don't play it immediately. That's fine. So they have a lead right now, but that's, I think, going to change pretty quickly here. Boom. Okay, that's already us taking the lead. They only have one card remaining, and it's well clear weather, so that's not going to change much. And now we have a bunch of musters remaining here. So we'll drop you guys. And that's going to be pretty big. And then we'll also throw you down here. I actually don't even remember if we have any other musters to go along with it. We don't, but it's definitely enough. So there we have it. We've taken out the innkeep and we actually went particularly big that time. One of the few, perhaps even only times, we've gone with the 10 crown bet for random people that we played in Gwent. And I believe we are now all set in here. We just had a couple things we wanted to sell probably to Ivy Air. And then we'll go back to doing the main quest. I saw that piece of paper on the ground, I was like, I swear. That's another one of those sermons. I'm not going to be happy. But yeah, also, I, I think we, we didn't get any new cards out of that game, right? I don't think I saw anything shown up there. And that's Greetings, what we were expecting, right? Greetings, Geralt. How might I be of help? Okay, so we are still going to sell stuff to you. What do you have on offer? And the things we were looking to sell were going to be our older Thyssian armor, which is actually it's worth a decent amount, as well as these Order of the Flaming Rose gauntlets, which aren't worth too much, but hey, it's something. Okay. And now we'll be on so our way. Long. Although, before we do that, let's just quickly... Emma, get, get, 
Greetings. No, 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 not, not what I, not, not what I meant to talk so to or interact with. Sorry, Javier. Nothing personal, but I actually had a appointment with your whetstone. Not you. Okay. Is that the sound of the person sweeping? That was so loud. Am I going the right way? I am not going the right way, am I? Never mind, I am going the right way. We're fine. Okay. So we need to talk to Shawnee about the Von Everick family crypt. Remind me. Where do things currently stand with the main quest? As Master Mirror forewarned, Olgierd Von Everick asked Geralt to perform several tasks for him. One of these was to show his brother, Lodomir, the time of his life. Okay, yes. But his, his brother is no longer living. As known for many pleasant personal experiences, the Witcher, grim as he may sometimes seem, is more than capable of arranging a fantastic night out. Absolutely. Yet in this case, there's one particularly tricky catch. Vladimir was dead. As a first step to overcoming this obstacle, Geralt decided to go see Shawnee, who, as her Danian subject, an Oxenford resident and a woman of great learning, might just have some information about where Vladimir was buried. So that's one. And then we have Open Sesame. This is technically the one that we've gone further on. Uh, oh. This is the herbalist that we did the... Is this the herbalist that we did the side quest with? Perhaps so. Yeah, I think we probably, although this one is technically higher level, I think we probably try to wrap this one up, given how, you know, we're like much further along with this. Yeah, yeah, I think we were, we we're trying to wrap this one up. So let's go there then. That may make a little bit more sense. And yeah, it is the same herbalist, conveniently with a fast travel spot right next to his house. Uh, excuse me? You guys causing issues here? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, hold on, hold on. Just, just give me a second here. Okay, so we now have the improved range on our world. So I'd like to try to make a point of using that a little bit more aggressively now to see how it feels. At least when we get the chance. Well, we probably do need to get whacked into oblivion. Yeah, we probably need to, uh... To get some adrenaline points first. Okay, no, no, none of that. Okay. All right, that's just gonna whack at his shield, but can we, like, loop around? <laughs> the world never ends? Uh, I mean, you know, probably not our, our best world ever. Did kind of just... Try to whirl through the shield and didn't really expect anything better than that to happen, but Let's see that. And Ooh, Carol, that's just cruel and unusual, man. Easy spot. Lots to do. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? More Gildorf swords, but the real question is, is the herbalist okay? Was rather efficient. <laughs> that all you got to say? I saved your life. Pfft. We'd have disposed of that rabble easily. We? We. My, aren't we precise? You know what I mean. Now, are you here to trade or not? No, I don't know what you mean. Just casually referring to yourself in the first person plural? Or do you actually have something else here? Or someone else? help you, or are you just assuming all along that, miraculously, Geralt was gonna come to save the day? I don't know, buddy. It's awfully bold of you to assume. But we need some yarrow extract. That is the primary reason why we're here. Wouldn't happen to have some yarrow extract. I do. Oh, that's true, it was on our silver sword for the increased, uh, me, please. whirl. That's true. So technically we didn't see any, any difference there. I was gonna say, I couldn't really tell that much, but, well, there's confirmation for it. 
And I suppose you could make a make an interesting case for, or at least interesting discussion regarding which one you think is preferable. If you're gonna have the increased world distance or range on one of your weapons, would you prefer steel or would you prefer silver? I don't know. Maybe silver would be better. 